Mike Van and Talking Nerds, and welcome to a new episode of Limonaro, where this week we're going to have some fun and then do some detective work. As some of you may remember in the book, when Frodo arrives at Rivendell, Bilbo is already in the Hall of Fire where they recite the poetry and the music. And Bilbo gives a brilliant poem called uh, The Erendelinwe, which is about Erendel's journey to Valinor. And of course, he takes the film real him and his half elven wife, girlfriend, partner, Elwing. They voyage off to Valinor and give the message of, uh, give the request of help from both races, from the elves and the men, uh, asking the Valar to intercede on their behalf against Morgoth. And that, of course, kicks off the War of Wrath. Erendel ends up as the brightest star in the sky, um, is the origin story for the planet Venus. And Erendel, he's sailing through the sh- sailing through the skies on his shining boat, Vingalot, um, with the emerald upon his brow, with, with a similar symbol on his brow. And of course, it's, it's Arendelle's light, which um, Galadriel is catching in her mirror. She's using her reflective, her reflecting pool to catch the light of the Silmaril as it flies overhead. And then she bottles it, and that's what she gives to Frodo. It's the, actually the light of the Silmaril, the light from the two trees back in Valinor three, nine thousand years ago. And she bottles it and gives it to Frodo, and that's his light and dark places. So the poem which Bilbo recites has a really complex history, and Tolkien was actually working on it many, 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 many years before, um, years before the publication of Lord of the Rings. And it used to be a poem called Errantry. That's how it starts off. And he says, Tolkien, Tolkien said in a letter, in general, these stanzas were meant to begin at speed and slow down, except in the last group, which was to begin slowly and then pick up at errand two and at the end high speed to match the beginning. Of course, the reciter was supposed to at once begin repeating it at even higher speed in the beginning, unless somebody cried once is enough. So this is a poem, it's full of internal rhyme screams, it's got a really fast rhythm, and um, it's designed to trip the reader up. So... I'm just going to move my big book over here. I'm going to see how I do. I have read it a few times to try and get the hang of it, but it is, it's full of complicated rhymes and really complicated rhythms, so let's give it a go. But first off, I realised last time I didn't do, ooh, there we go. I'm just going to shrink myself, wee, 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 shove myself into the corner and let's have a pop. There was a merry passenger, a messenger, an errander. He took a tiny porringer and oranges for provender. He took a little grasshopper and harnessed her to carry him. He chased a little butterfly that fluttered by to marry him. He made wings of taffeta to laugh at her and catch her with. He made her shoes of beetle skin with needles in to lapse them with. They felt a bitter quarrelling and sorrowing he fled away. And long he studied sorcery and ossery a many day. He made a shield and morion of coral and of ivory. He made a spear of emerald that glimmered all in bravery. A sword he made of malachite and stalactite and brandished it. He went and fought the dragonfly, and went <coughs> and went and fought the dragonfly and wagon high and vanquished it. He battled with the dumbledores and bumbles all in honeybees. He won the golden honeycomb and running home on sunny seas in ship of leaves of gossamer with blossoms for a canopy. He polished up and burnished up and furnished up his panoply. He tarried for a little while in little isles and plundered them, and webs and all the attercops he shattered, cut and sundered them. And coming home with honeycomb and money none, he remembered it. His message and his errand too, his daring do had hindered it. And the idea would be that you'd read that again, fast and fast and fast until you fall over. Um, so the next part, Christopher Tolkien has done a lot of digging because the Arendelle was a mariner poem which arrives, which you read in the published text of Lord of the Rings, is not the final version that Tolkien had written. So while Christopher was going through all his father's notes, he discovered there are lots of different versions of it, all at different stages in a museum called the Marquette, the Marquette Museum. And with a little bit of detective work, he's put together how the poem should actually be. We've got notes of the full version of different stanzas. And then it says like stanza three is, is in Fellowship of the Ring. Stanza four, we've got in full and stanza five is in Fellowship. Stanza six is in Fellowship with the difference in the path line. And it turns out it's only supposed to be nine stanzas, but in the Fellowship we've got 10. So we're gonna read through what Bilbo's poem should actually have sounded like. So I've got my 
massive history of Middle Earth, and I have my fantastic, much loved Lord of the Rings all in one piece. Fantastic book, which I totally love, and I've had to put pencil marks in, which I'm quite sad about. Uh, you know, we start for our art. So, Arendel was a mariner that tarried in Arvenian. He built a boat of timber felled, of limber thrin the vet. Let's get about this down. Arendel was a mariner that tarried in Arvenian. He built a boat of timber felled in Nimbrathil to journey in. Her sails he wove of silver fair, with silver were her banners sewn. Her prow was fashioned like the swans that white upon the phallus roam. His coat that came from ancient kings of chained rings was forged of old. His shining shield with all wounds, all wounds defied, with runes entwined of dwarven gold. His bow was made of dragon horn, his arrow shorn of ebony, of triple steel his habergion, his scabbard on chalcedony. His sword was like a flame in sheath, with gems was wreathed his helmet tall, an, el an eagle plume upon his crest, upon his breast an emerald. Beneath the moon and under star he wandered far from northern strands, bewildered in unenchanted ways beyond the days of mortal lands, from gnashing in the narrow ice where shadows lie in frozen hills, from nether heats and burning waste he turned in haste and roving still, and starless, wa starless waiters for astray, at last he came to night of naught, and passed and never sight he saw of shining shore nor sight nor like he sought. The winds of fear came driving him, and blindly in the foam he fled, from west to east and errandless, and heralded and home sped. In might the Feanorans that swore the unforgotten oath brought war into Avenian with burning and with broken troth, and Elwing from her fastness dim, then cast her in the waters wide, but like a mew was swiftly borne, uplifted over roaring tide. Though hopeless night she came to him, and flame was in the darkness lit, or bright than light of diamond the fire upon her carcinet. The Silmaril she bound on him, and crowned him with the living light, and dauntless then with burning brow he turned his prow at middle night, beyond the world, beyond the sea, then strong and free a storm arose, a wind of power in Tamenel, by pass that seldom mortal goes, from middle earth and mighty breath, as flying wraith across the grey. And long forsaken seas distressed, from east to west he passed away. Through ever night he back was borne, and black and roaring waves that ran over leagues and lit and founded shores that drowned before the days began, until he heard on strands of pearl where ends the world of music long, where ever foaming billows roll the yellow gold and jewels won. He saw the mountain silent rise where twilight lies upon the knees of Valinor and Eldamar, but held beheld afar beyond the seas a wanderer escaped from night to haven right he came at last to elven home the queen and fair where keen the air and pale as glass beneath the hills of elmerin a glimmer in a valley sheer as lamplit towers in tyrion for ever king of mountain sheer a ship they knew they built for him of mithril and of elven glass with crystal keel, no shaven oar, nor sail she bore, and a silver mast, the Silmaril as lantern light, and banner bright with silk and a living flame, a fire and stained by Elbreth, herself was set, who thither came. From Evan for 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 ever even's lofty halls, where softly shimmer fountains fall, the wink his wings him bore, a wandering light. Beyond the misty mountain wall. From worlds then he turned away, and yearned again to find afar his home through shadows journeying and burning as an island star. And high above the mists he came, a distant flame beyond the sun, a wonder ere the waking dream were grey the northern waters run. And over Middle earth he passed, and heard at last a weeping sore of women and of elven maids in elder days and years of yore. But on him mighty doom was laid, till moon should fade and orbit star to pass and tarry never more and hear the shores of mortal isle. To the end of days and errand high, a herald bright that never rests, to bear his burning lamp afar, flamifer of westerness. So there you have it. That is Bilbo Baggins's full Arendel poem, as put together by Christopher Tolkien, because his father had so many sets of notes and the correct set of notes for the poem had been misplaced. So when the full um, the full version that he had of Lord of the Rings, the, the, the Fellowship of the Ring, when he sent that manuscript to the publishers, 
he'd included the incorrect version of um, the Arendel poem. So we have that all ready for you now. So I hope you enjoy it. If you like what you've heard, please do like and subscribe and tip the little bell button so you get notified when we send you a new poem. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll be speaking to you again soon.